Welcome to our lesson on testing claims about variances or standard deviations. In this lesson, uh, we're going to look at methods for running hypothesis tests about a population standard deviation or a uh, population variance. And in order to do that, we have to look at sampling distributions that utilize the chi-square distribution, pictured here at the bottom. Some vocabulary that we use with these as before, n is still our sample size, s is still our sample standard deviation, s squared of course is the variance, and then we use the Greek letters sigma and sigma squared for the population standard deviation and variance. Please pay attention to when things are squared and when they aren't, because obviously that will mess up your calculations greatly if you get them confused. The requirements necessary to run this test as always, we have to have a simple random sample, and uh, the population has to have a normal distribution. Now before, we've seen that if we aren't sampling from a normal distribution, as long as we have a large enough sample, we can kind of get away with it. When we're dealing with the chi-square, however, having a normal distribution is a much stricter requirement. We don't have the luxury of saying, well, as long as our sample is large enough, it doesn't need to be a normal distribution. Any significant deviations from a normal distribution in your population uh, pretty much make this test null and void. So you really need to check uh, for that normal distribution before you can uh, apply a chi-square test. The test statistic for this one is the chi-square and it's a very very simple formula so you could always do this one by hand very easily. Again, we can use uh, either p-values or critical values for testing. We can also use the uh, confidence interval uh, a technique, and I'll show that at the end of the lecture. But as before, I prefer p-value. Critical value is kind of a close second, and confidence interval technique is a distant, distant third. As I've mentioned before, and I just want to caution you here again, that the chi-square test is not robust at all against departures from normality, meaning that if your uh, population is not normal, this will really fall apart. So you always got to run those normal quantile plots and make sure you have a normal population. Just a reminder of some of the properties of the chi-square distribution, that uh, all values are non-negative, meaning zero and above. The distribution is not symmetrical, as you can see from the pictures below. It's skewed to the right, severely skewed to the right, right? And as your degrees of freedom increase, as you can see from the picture on the right, as you go from a degree of freedom of 10 to 20, the curve starts to kind of shift to the right and become less skewed and more symmetrical. Don't forget the degrees of freedom are always n minus 1. Let's look at an example. Here we have below um, a list of heights from a simple random sample of 10 supermodels. Now we're going to test the claim that supermodels have heights uh, with much less variation than heights of just the general population of women. We're going to use an alpha level of 0.01 to test this claim. And of course, we need to know what the standard deviation of heights of women are in the general population, and that ends up being 2.6 inches. I've provided the summary statistics down below. Uh, these are, of course, of your sample. That's why they're S's and not sigmas. So if you want to try and run this by hand, you can. But I'm also going to show you how to do it in technology. First thing we have to do is check and make sure that we have that simple random sample. Because if not, um, we have a lot of problems. And from our normal quantile plot, we can see that the lines line up, the, sorry, the dots line up pretty much on a straight line, and there's no real uh, pattern. So we're, we're pretty safe in assuming that it comes from a normal uh, population. So on to our hypothesis testing. Step one, as always, identify our claim and write our hypotheses with the proper sim, uh, symbols. Our claim, of course, is that the standard deviation is less than 2.6 inches, which we would express as sigma, right? Less than 2.6 inches. If that's not true, then the other side of the argument is that it's greater than or equal to. 
the traditionalists will then make your null hypothesis strictly equal to, but uh, having it greater than or equal to is actually becoming more uh, accepted. And then of course the alternative is always just going to be less than. And in this case the alternative is our claim, right? That's not always the case, but in this case the alternative is our claim. And it's always good to identify which of our two hypotheses is our claim. Step two, select our significance level. It's given to us as 0.01. Step three, determine our sampling distribution. Since we're dealing with sigma and standard deviations, we have to use the chi-square distribution. Step three continued, we calculate the test statistic and the p-value. Well, the formula is very simple. We plug in n equals 10, 10 minus 1. s squared, remember, is the variance, so we had to get the, um, the variance. And this number here is the standard deviation being squared, right? And then all over the uh, variance of the population, we were given that the standard deviation of the population was 2.6, so that's why this number is being squared, 2.6 squared. This gives us a critical value, right? This would be our chi-square critical value of 0.852. Uh, like all of our other test statistics, sorry, I said critical value. This is our test statistic equals 0 0.852. The critical value can be found from tables and, and technology, but basically we're trying to find the cutoff on our chi-square distribution that puts 1% to the left because we set alpha to be 1%, right? So that's our rejection region. And this is a one-tailed test because uh, H1, remember our alternative, was that sigma was less than 2.6. So that's a, a left-tailed test. So we're putting all of that alpha in one tail. So we need to find our critical value that puts 1% to the left and 99% to the right. And that ends up being a chi-square critical of 2.0. 088. We can already see from the critical value technique, right, that our test statistic falls within that rejection region and we would reject. But if we were using um, technology, we really don't even have to worry about the critical value because it just spits out our p-value and we look at that and go, that's smaller than 0.01, also telling us to reject. So as we continue on to step four, either from the critical value technique or the p-value technique, we end up rejecting the null hypothesis. So in step five, we want to relate that back in kind of non-technical wording. And it basically tells us that there is, in fact, sufficient evidence to support the claim that supermodels have heights with a standard deviation that's less than 2.6 inches. Because we rejected that, uh, alter that null, which meant we were supporting the alternative and that's where our claim is. So we're supporting that claim that the heights of supermodels have less variation than the heights of women in the general population. If we were going to try the confidence interval method, we would build a 98% a confidence interval because in order, remember your confidence interval has to be symmetrical around um, your measurement, right? In this case we have our standard deviation and then we're going to have an interval around it. And in order to have a rejection region over here on the left side, because remember we're just doing a one-tailed test, so we're only concerned with things being too small. So having our left-tailed rejection region of 1%, because our confidence interval has to be symmetrical, this ends up being a 98% confidence interval and leaving 1% up here as well. If you were to create a 98% confidence interval around your standard deviation, you would get this one. And because this interval does not in fact contain 2.6, right, we can see that all these values are below 2.6, that supports the claim that sigma is actually below 2.6. So we get the same result out of the uh, confidence interval uh, method as we would out of the other two. But again, I don't like it. It has its problems. We're better off doing the p-value method or the critical value method. Now, if you want to use technology 
and why wouldn't you? Unfortunately, this is one case where uh, the TI-83s and 84s uh, fall down. They, they can't do these. You can download programs to make them do that, but you have to have the cable to hook it up to your computer, and it can be a pain. So instead, you're better off uh, going to StatCrunch because it will do it for you, no problem at all. Here, I've already put the data in. These are the, uh, the 10 values that we had before, the heights. Um, we can use that data, or we could have used the summary stats they gave us. But since we're dealing with standard deviations, we're going to variant statistics, one sample. And I'm going to do with data, because I'm going to use this raw data. Tell it I want uh, variable 2. We're running a hypothesis test, and it's it's going to you know default to one, but you need to tell it um, what we're uh, testing. Now you might make the mistake of putting 2.6 in here, and why is 2.6 a mistake? Well, if you remember, the question was we were testing if the standard deviation was less than 2.6, but look at this symbol. That's sigma squared. So, and up here, right, variance. This thing is, is testing for variances. So the first thing you have to do is square that 2.6 so that you can put in the actual variance, 6.76. And that's what you know correlates to a standard deviation of 2.6. You then have to change this to the right signal symbol. right? We're looking for a left-tailed, lower than. And that's it. Compute. Very simple. You get your chi-squared statistic of 0.85, you know, 1, 5. And if you remember, that's what they had on the previous screen. It was 0.852. They just rounded to three decimals. And then there's the same p-value, 0 0.0003. And because that's less than 0 0.01, we would reject. It's just that simple, guys. That's how we test claims about standard deviations and variances.